of the show. But it's time now for this. Yes, it's that moment in the programme where we take a look at the dark underbelly of the news agenda. Tonight, as the Prime Minister gears up for a battle in the Commons to roll out Covid passports for nightclubs and football stadia, to what extent is New York City a reasonable test case for this policy? Just how is this policy of Covid vaccine passports going down in the normally freedom-loving Big Apple? Well, let's go now live to New York City and speak to political commentator Portia Berry Kilby. Hi, Portia. Hi, Mark. How are you? Really well. Thank you so much for joining us. So have vaccine passports, COVID vaccine passports, arrived in the Big Apple? Yes. So they were introduced in August and as of September 13th, they're enforceable by fines if businesses are found to have broken them. And are they stored on your phone or is it a piece of paper? So basically, either way is allowed. You can download an app and upload the proof to the app, or you can show your vaccine piece of paper. But it doesn't stop there because that would be a vaccine passport. But now they're also asking that you show proof of identification. So you can't only show a vaccine card, but you also have to make sure that it's yours and not someone else's. And how's it going down? How are the locals adapting to this? I think with mixed responses, of course, some people have no qualms. I would definitely fit into the other camp. You have to show a vaccination history to someone, whereas ordinarily, at least in my life, that has never been the case. And you also have to show that it is yours and who you are with your ID. Where in the US particularly, the whole debate about having to show an ID when you go to vote is so contentious because so many people, especially of ethnic minority groups, don't have photographic ID. So it's kind of a double whammy, not only your vaccine status, but also who you are. So what will this uh, COVID vaccine passport give you access to? So pretty much you need it for anything. If you want to go anywhere indoors for a prolonged period, you have to have it. So be that a cafe and sit in, you need it. To eat in at McDonald's, you need a vaccine passport, as well as larger things like theatres, museums, gyms, pretty much all parts of life apart can, from the grocery you, store. So, so grocery stores don't require What about small cafes or small restaurants? Small cafes, small restaurants, if you're eating indoors, you have to have it. And that means that they've got to employ a member of staff to check at the door? Absolutely, yeah. So they'll either check at the door or when you're sitting down, they'll come over and check. And then there's the awkward, awkward moment where you can't find it in your bag, you can't find a photo on your phone. And there's also places which are no longer offering indoor dining simply because they don't have the staff to enforce the vaccine requirement. And you mentioned how uh, having to show voter ID to actually go in and, and participate in democracy could be very prejudicial against uh, people from certain minority groups who, who don't have an ID. And I guess the same is true of these COVID vaccine passports, that if you haven't got an ID, you can't go out for dinner or go to the movies. Yeah, exactly. Especially, so in New York, you need the vaccine passport, even if you're 12 years old. So it's 12 years and over, you need a proof of at least one dose of a vaccine. And many 12 year olds won't have photographic ID. And that isn't required if you're under 18 to have a photo ID, but it is left to the business's own decision if they want to enforce a photo ID as well, they're entirely allowed to. What's it done to life in New York? I mean, on the surface, life seems pretty normal. There's definitely a taboo, I think, associated with people sitting outside because there's the option to sit outside if you're not vaccinated. And it um, does offer- So is, a, is that like is that the walk of shame? If you're, if you're having your latte yeah. outside of, of Starbucks, you're like one of the bad people. You're, 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 a, one of the you're bad a COVID, people. You're a you're COVID denier, people. you're an anti-vaxxer, yeah. you're a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of seek indoor shelter, lest the people passing by hell insults your way. And of course, this is just within New York. Is it statewide or the city? So this is New York City. So Mayor de Blasio introduced it for the city. And this would never happen in Florida or Texas. A lot of this is political, isn't it? I mean, I should sure hope it's not going to be introduced in Florida or Texas. Then I didn't expect it to be introduced in America at all. Freedom-loving Yankees. 
Um, so it's starting a dangerous precedent. And New York, obviously a more liberal city, shall we say, not the state per se, and they also have high vaccination numbers. So really the justification for it seems to be blown out of the window because it's not justified by the science. It is um, a political motivation. I'm delighted to bring my panel in, Culver Ranger, Felicity Morse and Tessa Sanderson. And I would like to ask you whether uh, Portia people are rebelling at all. I mean, you've mentioned you've got those outside who are not going into venues and that's a way of, you know, having a loophole, but that's not going to be great in December or January when we know how cold New York gets in the winter months. Uh, but have there been protests? Have people taken to the streets? Is anyone angry about this? I think some people are angry, for sure. The protests, if they're happening, are not receiving the attention they've received in other countries, be that the UK and France especially. But people, my friends, are at the tether. There is anger, it's just not terribly vocalised, in part because people have the vaccine, which is why they don't need to enforce, they shouldn't be enforcing it. So people are still going about their daily life. The people who haven't had the vaccine are a very small minority. They've hit herd immunity. So it's not really worth kicking up a fuss or boycotting all parts of life. You might as well still go to your cafe and enjoy your latte sat down. Kulveer Ranger, uh, why is your former boss, Boris Johnson, considering putting us through this hell and through this folly? Well, I think, I hope, uh, the Americans, and I hope we here don't look back at anger at this kind of policy, because I think we saw the vaccine minister, Nadeem Zahawi, saying that a COVID passport goes against everything he believes in. I think the words were something like that he yeah. was saying earlier this week. So we shouldn't rush headlong into this. Uh, as Porsche is quite rightly saying, the justification at this point to enforce these kinds of restrictions just doesn't seem to be there. And I think the great British public would react, uh, hopefully, with more anger than, than the Ameri well, the people, good people of New York are at the moment. I think the key thing here, though, is that there has also been an inherent view in America of ID. You know, it's a coming of age thing. People get ID, they, they have a sense of uh, showing their age when they're driving, to buy alcohol and various other things. We have not had that in Britain, and I don't think we'd accept it as easily as uh, maybe the New Yorkers have at this well, point. Yes, I mean, Tessa, my, my concern is that once you introduce the infrastructure of a COVID vaccine passport, that you'll have it forever. I mean, I spoke to Tom Hunt, a Tory backbencher who promised me on this show on Sunday night that any COVID vaccine passports would be temporary. But I, I just don't believe that. What do you think? I don't believe it either. And I think it's going to be a problem, you know, with the British people accepting that. Um, because, like you say, we, different climates, different things. It's, it's queuing, it's, it's more staff that, that have to employ, especially for businesses and things like that. I think it would be a whole frustrating situation and I really don't think that the public will accept it, you know, as, as such or take it on board as easily as people think. Portia, why do you think uh, the New York authorities have rolled this out? So they give two reasons. One is, is it's safer for everyone, Delta variant is on the rise. That seems a weak line of argument, as if you have the vaccine, you can still pass on the virus, you can still catch the virus. But on the flip side, they say they're rolling it out to incentivize vaccine take up amongst those groups, primarily the young who haven't had it. But they've hit herd immunity, and if a young person gets COVID, they're most likely to be fine. So the reasons that they've given, at least, both seem fairly weak. Uh, Portia, finally, uh, New York has, I mean, by the way, one of my favourite cities in the world. What a stunning city, great people as well. But it's had a really tough pandemic, hasn't it? Scores of businesses have closed and it's been one of the most locked down cities and states in America with a higher COVID death toll than the likes of Florida and Texas. Um, what do you think is going to be the legacy of the pandemic in that great city? I mean, is is New York scarred by what it's been through in the last year and a half? It seems to be coming back. It definitely seems a slow process. But the past few months, summer seems to have picked things up a lot. But there is fear on the ground, especially amongst small businesses, that the skull will be deeper or larger than what it will be currently with protocols like this in place. Because people 
on the fringes who don't agree are less likely to go out. And also they just can't have indoor seating if they can't enforce these policies. Well, thousands of restaurants have closed, retail units boarded up. We've seen the same, unfortunately, in some of our cities here in the UK, Portia. Um, is, is it a less sort of fun place to be? I've also heard about soaring crime in New York as well. So I was in New York two years ago and it was great to walk down the streets at like 3, 4 a.m. feeling totally safe because there were so many people around all the while. Now it's a seedy place to be wandering around when it's dark. That's, yeah, obviously there are fewer people here and there isn't the buzz that there used to be. I think in part due to tourism, there still are no out foreign tourists in the city. So yeah, it's a slow process. Uh, briefly, Portia, uh, for some reason, uh, not only are you a fabulous guest, but, but you dovetail with a lot of stories we're covering here on GB News. Um, is that great city bracing itself for tomorrow's awful anniversary of the World Trade Center attack? Yeah, no, it's definitely in the American mind even more poignant than it is for people in Britain. I think in Britain, we commemorate 9-11. We definitely had minutes of silence at school if it fell on a school day. But here it's something quite different. So very relevant, especially to recent news. But mm. yeah, hopefully it's nothing like of that kind would ever happen again. Well, here's, here's absolutely hoping, agree with you fully on that one, Portia. Is 9-11 is part of daily life in New York? Is it something that the locals carry around with them? Or did life just move on after that tragedy? I think if you speak to any local New Yorker, they will say it's a very clear, vivid, ingrained image in their minds. Um, people my generation as well, they all have a story to tell about where they were at 9-11 and that their entire generation has been shaped by the idea that the US is no longer invincible. Mm. Um, yeah, it, there were some very heartfelt conversations with Americans about 9-11. And Portia, you're a reporter out there. Are you British? I'm British, born and raised in Leicestershire. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Doesn't get better than that. The East Midlands. Happy That's days. <laughs> uh, so why, why, did you, why did you move to America? So I came over for college. I received a full scholarship to go to Harvard um, when I was 18. Stayed here for four years, hopped back to England for a bit, and then I'm back out here working for the short term, at least. So do you, do you uh, miss Blighty and do you think you'll eventually come back? I do miss Blight Tea. I would love that sooner than later. Nothing quite beats England. It's and Britain and the UK. That's all got a very fond place in my heart. Uh, Portia, um, we uh, we wish you well and thank you so much for uh, telling us all about COVID passports in New York. And let's catch up soon. Um, live from New York thank City, Portia Berry Kilby, reporter there, and most importantly, an East Midlander. Brilliant stuff. Now.